So we've talked about the idea of having a valid study, by which we just mean uh, that the study does whatever it is that we're claiming it does. So if we claim that the study provided good evidence and reasons for believing something, for drawing certain conclusions, uh, then it's a valid study if, if, we really, if it really does provide the evidence and reasons that we're saying it does. I want to get a little more specific now, talk about uh, two different types of validity. Uh, the first one has to do uh, two different types of study validity. So these are both subtypes of, what we're, of the general idea of having a valid study. The first one has to do with this question of uh, do the results do the results of your study uh, I'm going to say hold true outside and that's the key word here outside of your study in other words if we make some conclusions about the study. Let's, maybe they're completely valid in terms of we're saying the study showed this. For the people we studied in this experiment, we got these results. And we might draw some valid conclusions, some conclusions that are true uh, internally to the study, within the study that is true. And we'll talk about something next called internal validity of a study. But just because our study was well conducted, all of the results are accurate and precise, uh, doesn't mean that we can say anything about the outside world. Do these, would these results hold true if we did them at a different time or in a different place or with different people? If we just go out into the world, are we going to get those same results? So this, this concept, this is called, this is called external validity. In other words, we say that a study has external validity if we're able to, if we have good evidence and reasons for claiming that what happened in the study uh, would also happen in general, in other, in other cases, in other times, in other places. Uh, so, so actually that term, that term in general is often used when we're talking about external validity. What we're really asking is, can we, can we, I'm going to say appropriately, in other words, based on good evidence and reasons, can we appropriately generalize? By generalize, I mean we say, okay, this was true for our study, but it is also true in general, in some way. It doesn't mean it's always true, but in some way that is broader than what we just studied uh, in this one study. So let me give you some examples of that. Uh, we talked about the idea of you have you may have a sample where you want to make some conclusions about a population, right? So you have a sample and a population. This this is a an issue of external validity. If I have a sample and I discover something about that sample, even if all of my methods for studying that sample are good, there's still this question of can I, you know, does this generalize? the results that were true for the sample, do they generalize to the population? So uh, this would be like when we do a political poll, we take a sample of people, and then we make a claim that those that the population in general is going to vote for a particular candidate. So we are saying these in our sample, you know, more than 50% of the people said they were going to vote for this candidate. Uh, we believe that is also true for the population. We believe that is true in general. So we are generalizing that result if it is appropriate to generalize because we've done, uh, you know, we've done things correctly in our study and we have good evidence and reasons for generalizing. Then we say that the study has external validity. A good example of where that would not be true is if we did something where we had a biased sample like we had talked before about the idea of maybe you've selected people only out of the phone book to call for your political poll, and maybe people who own phones are in some way different from people who don't, and that difference influences who they're going to vote for. So the people who have the phones and respond, you know, uh, and participate in your uh, study uh, are going to vote differently from other people. Uh, so that's that's one issue of external validity. That kind of bias in our selection, that kind of selection bias, would be a threat to the external validity of the study. 
Um, let's go over a couple more examples. We might, uh, we might want to generalize from one study that we do. We might want to generalize to another study. So uh, for example, uh, this came up in my own thesis for, uh, for my master's degree. I wanted to replicate uh, what another person had done in their study. And in that study, I won't get into the details, but they basically said we gave participants this message. We had them read this message. And after they read the message, we gave them an opportunity to cheat. And they took the opportunity more often when they had read that message. So they cheated more often as a result of this message. The question is, will that, will that again, will that generalize to, to my study? So I did a study trying to replicate those results. And it turned out that what was true for the students in that particular study was not true for the students uh, that I worked with. And when I discussed this with the original authors of the original study, they said, well, you know, the, st the students who participated in our study uh, were in a very, you know, in a, in a more prestigious university. Maybe their education level was higher. Maybe they understood the message because it was a pretty sophisticated message from, uh, from a scientist. Uh, maybe they understood it better. Maybe when I gave it to the students in my study, uh, they didn't understand the message. So it couldn't have the effect on their cheating behavior. So again, the idea is, uh, did what these other researchers find in their study, is that something that's going to hold true in, for other people in other cases in the world at large at other times in history? Um, let's talk about uh, in, in the Milgram experiment, in the Milgram study, uh, we have a case where there was this question of is that going to, is that going to uh, generalize to the real world, right? So Milgram says, hey, when I put people under pressure, when I give them an authority figure that's hovering over them and telling them to follow orders in a way that harms other people, they do it. And, that's, and, this, and that was true, obviously, and that's what he showed in his study. So nobody's questioning that. But there was this question of, will those results hold true in general? Does this study have external validity in the real world? And there were a number of questions about that, a number of criticisms. So people will often say, uh, for example, when I bring this up with my introductory psychology students, they'll even have some very good questions about it. Like, uh, well, is that going, you know, this, this study was done with men. Is this generalizable to people in general? Because if it was only done with men, maybe women are going to act differently. I don't think women would be as obedient as men under those circumstances. And actually, in fact, they followed up on that to show with further studies that, yeah, it does hold true for women as well. And that, by the way, is something that you'll see that often we have some kind of a threat to the validity or some limitation in our ability to show external validity in a single study. So we'll do follow-up studies to show, yeah, okay, this preliminary result that was found in this one circumstance with this group of people also was true with others at other times in other places or in general with the population. So, uh, so that, you know, it's not like you have to show everything all at once in one study, but some, you just have to not, again, not overclaim. So sometimes, uh, you know, they follow up with one of these studies and it turns out not to be true, that, that it holds true in a more general sense. And then there's the question of, well, under what conditions does it hold true and under what conditions doesn't it? Uh, just to give you a couple more examples from uh, the Milgram study, the idea of, of, well, that was, you know, that was back then. So, so generalization can have to do with generalizing from one time to, you know, this is something that's going to hold true for human beings uh, in general throughout time. So I often hear this criticism of the Milgram study that, well, people at that time, uh, it was a very different culture. So they were obedient. But in today's world, you would get much lower levels of obedience. And so they've actually done some more recent replications of the Milgram study or variations on the Milgram study more recently. And it turns out, yeah, people are still just as obedient as they were at that time. That doesn't mean that in 50 years or 100 years, there, there might be some, some change to our culture. But, uh, but it's, it does support the idea that this is something that is generally true about the human condition, about the human mind and the way that it works. And so it lends external support to the idea that the, the study has external validity, um, not just 
from one, you know, one group of people. So not just from a sample to a population, but also from study to study. So if we were to, you know, do variations on Milgram's ex uh, experiment, we would see the same results in study after study. And uh, not just in, you know, not just in the laboratory under these very specific conditions with this population or at this time, but out in the real world at any point in time that you might choose. So that's the idea of external validity. Next, we'll talk about the idea of, uh, of the internal validity of your study.